home labs and storage. Where are you going to store your home lab? Now I'm not talking about physically where you're gonna store it. Not like I'm gonna put it in the corner of a room or I'm throwing it into the garage or I'm putting it inside of a comms cabinet. I'm more talking about where is the data storage gonna actually live? Because data, there's gonna be lots of it. You've got your photos, your movies, you've got your personal documents, you've got all of that sort of stuff and that's stored somewhere. But then when you're getting into a home lab, you wanna go and experiment. You wanna go play around with stuff. You know, the whole point of a home lab is to learn. You wanna build some VMs. You wanna play around with the new domain control. You wanna go and build yourself some servers of some sort. You wanna learn a little bit about hacking and penetration testing. Where are you gonna store all of this stuff? It's a good question. I'm gonna give you my options around where you could potentially be storing your data from your home lab. I'm sure you don't want to be chained to your desk all summer, reviewing, monitoring, checking your system health, making sure that everything is okay. Who wants to be doing that? We got better things to do. You need to break free from that and become an IT mastermind regardless of where you are. You're at a beach, you're at a cafe, you're at the top of a mountain somewhere. Take charge of your tech empire with Pulseway. You can monitor and control your IT systems from anywhere and anytime. Something that I absolutely love is that you can actually get real time alerts. You can then proactively go in and troubleshoot them and you can do all of this from a super nice, super sleek interface that makes you feel like you're literally consoled in directly into your systems. You can now get rid of those clunky tools. You used to have to have all of these different tools for each individual thing. Don't let these things slow you down. Use Pulseway now as the ultimate IT power up, allowing you to even manage all the vulnerabilities, patching those vulnerabilities, optimizing performance and getting your hours back so you can then focus on other things. So you need to join that Pulseway revolution today. Let your IT superpowers shine. Don't wait, conquer the world of technology with Pulseway. You can start your free trial and get a special discount. Click on the link down below of this video description. Now you can call this thing a home lab, you can call it your home network, you can call it a small office lab. I mean, it could be stored at home, it could be stored in an office somewhere. It may just be your home network and you're just getting a lot of stuff. There's a lot of data in a lot of places and a lot of people have got data everywhere data in so many, so many locations. The first one is on a computer. Do you have a computer in your home lab, in your home network? Do you have a server? Do you have something that's a little bit more enterprising? My home lab right here, I've got some little computers. I've got an Intel NARC, I've got a Raspberry Pi. I've got all of these little bits and pieces right here. I've got a fully fledged server as well, a full rack based server. All of these, contain hard drive. In your home lab, you may have a desktop computer. You may have laptop computers. They all contain hard drive. Commonly, that's where your operating system is gonna be installed. You know, if you're running Windows, if you're running Linux, if you're running virtualization software like VMware or Citrix or Hyper-V, that stuff is stored on the hard drive. And that's all pretty standard because every single device is gonna have a, a hard drive of some sort. The challenge with that is, especially if you're in a home lab context, you wanna be able to share information very, very easily. You wanna make sure that information is safe, that it's not accidentally lost. Let's say you have a little computer and I'm gonna say, I'm gonna run Linux on this box and I install Linux and then I install a WordPress website. I'm then gonna build my website and install a whole bunch of stuff. What happens if that computer goes away? What if that hard drive dies? You're in a bit of pain. What if I've got some data on one of these devices and I wanna move the data to another one of my devices? Maybe I'm running a server, running Windows Server 2003. I mean, it's pretty old now. And I need to upgrade that. Well, you can't just do an upgrade of it normally. You can't just install an upgrade. You probably have to build a brand new box and then how are you gonna get the data from the old one to the new one? You're gonna to have to transfer it manually, various ways over the network, over a USB drive, whatever it may be. It could take you a bit of time. Then you've got hard drives outside of a computer. USB drives, got a USB hard drive that you run into the side of it. A small one, a big one, a little two and a half inch, a three and a half inch. You can run them into a case, you can run them into a dock. You've also got little pen drives, SD cards. All of these are sort of external media and you could plug that in to the side of a device and run all of your stuff directly off that. And then yeah, it does give you that option to be able to then unplug it from one device and move it to another device, etc., etc. But then what happens if that hard drive dies? Again, you're in that pain point, you've lost that data. Now, of course, the only other thing is that the uh, USB hard drives can be a little bit slow. They are USB, they can be USB 2, USB 3. I mean, USB 3, the newer versions of USB 3, they're not too bad, they're actually pretty fast. The only challenge with a USB drive is that multiple computers are gonna have trouble maybe reading that USB drive at the same time. Then you've got 
The cloud, the cloud, the cloud, the cloud. The cloud could be various things. It's just a very, very fancy term for things that are not stored in your location. It's not stored in your home lab. If you've got a physical home lab, well, the cloud is not that. The cloud is somewhere else. It's been stored, it's been hosted by somebody external to your space. And I mean, you've got the big guys, you've got the AWS, you've got Azure, you've got Google Cloud. You've also got other sharing platforms such as Dropbox, and there's a whole plethora of other cloud storage solution. And yes, you can store all of this data in the cloud. And as long as you are tech savvy enough to know how to manage it and administer it, you'll be okay. Because all of your devices, as long as they are on the internet, as long as they're connected out to the internet, you can actually go and download and manage all of the data directly from there. So you could have devices sitting in your home lab and then you can access the data back and forth that is sitting in the cloud. Now a little side note right here, and it's not for this video, but you could also build your home lab directly in the cloud. There's nothing stopping you from actually spinning up an AWS instance in the cloud and start building these things called EC2 instances using S3 storage and then creating your entire home lab actually in the cloud. So if you are actually running all of your devices in-house, do you actually want all of that tech gear to be able to have access out to the internet? Do you want the internet to be able to have access to your home lab? Probably not. You probably wanna be putting in some controls in place so that your home lab remains isolated. Very similar to when you're working in a company, you've got a comms cabinet, a rack data center with gear you probably wanna keep that as isolated from the internet, from the external web as possible. The only way that you should be able to get in is via like a secure VPN connection or a tunnel or something that is secure to be able to allow encrypted traffic and only selected traffic in and out. That may not be an option for cloud if you are wanting to keep your home lab completely isolated. Then the fourth option, I like this one the best, is a NAS, a network attached storage, a device that contains a whole bunch of disks and is, in the name suggests, network attached storage. It's actually on the network. This is a Synology NAS. I love Synology. If you wanna know more about Synology, I've got a training course. You can check that out down below in my link. But what this gives you is it gives you the option to install multiple disks inside of it. And these things can come in a myriad of disk configurations. They can come in two, in four, in eight, 16, and bigger. The benefit of something like this is you can actually set up a NAS to have multiple levels of redundancy or failover. So what this means is you've got all of your disks. You may have four disks inside of your NAS, but they will be set up with RAID groups, with actual failover built in with spare disks. So that if one disk fails, you don't actually lose the NAS altogether. You don't lose the data on there. So you can go and configure this NAS with some really big disks as well. Think about your USB hard drive. Maybe you buy a USB hard drive that's an eight terabyte drive. Great, you're then gonna run out of space and what are you gonna do? You're in a bit of trouble. With a NAS, you could buy four eight terabyte hard drives. If I'm running out of space, as long as it's configured in a specific way, you could take out a disk that's eight terabytes and then stick in a 10 terabyte one and then it'll go rebuild the RAID and then you've all of a sudden got some extra storage. It's quite cool. These units are also network attached. So on the back of them, you've got a network port. Some of them have got two ports. Some of them have got four ports. Because they're a little bit more corporate-y, you can have multiple ports and they run into your network switches. And now that device is available on the network. Any of the devices in your home environment, in your office environment even, can now access that NAS. Now the NAS can be configured with relevant shares, with SMB shares, NFS shares, whatever the operating system is that you're running, whether that be Apple, whether that be Microsoft, whether that be Linux, you can actually set up multiple types of folders and shares. And the nice thing is it has full compatibility with a lot of the modern virtualization platforms. So if you're gonna be running VMware, if you're gonna be running Citrix or any of these other guys, you can actually get a VMware environment, for example, to talk directly to the NAS. And then you can form a little connection between the two. And then you can build virtual machines and the storage is on the NAS now. Makes it so easy. So I could have one of my little computers here. I've got my little Zimmer board. I love this thing. And I could have that running VMware's ESXi, but the physical VMs, the VMs themselves that I'm building, the virtual machines that I'm building are not stored there. They're stored on my NAS. So then later on, when I wanna go and buy myself a really, really big server, 
I don't have to go and move the data. I don't have to move a VM from this smaller computer to the bigger computer. I just point my bigger server to the NAS and now that server can communicate with the NAS and now I can access all of the virtual machines on there and then start running my VMs that way. Really cool. The nice thing about a NAS of course is that it also does have an app store so I can go and download applications. I can actually run things directly on that. So it's almost like a computer with a whole bunch of disks. But you can also go and design and build your own NAS. There's like free NAS. You can actually go and have a computer stick it full of disks, and then install some software to convert that computer into a NAS, right? You can actually custom build it yourself if you need to as well. Love it if you subscribed, if you're not already subscribed. I release tech videos every single week and we'll see you on the next video.